Need for Speed has never had the most imaginative titles, and this one is no different. It's simply Need for Speed. No subtitle, no anything. You'd think that since I've chosen to go with such a plain title, that this game would take us back to the basics with the hardcore racing that Need for Speed is known for. And that is partially true, but in some respects, it can also feel like a step back. One of the key things that makes Need for Speed stand out from the crowd is the atmosphere of true street racing. If the cops see you speeding around the city, it'll start a chase. And the way that they've made this feel more real than ever is by giving you live action cutscenes featuring an entirely cringeworthy cast. Spike and the gang are real people, and by that I mean that they are actually acting. They aren't motion cap 3D characters, these are full on actors. There are sets, extras, background actors. I mean, the amount of effort that has gone into making these people feel legitimate is astounding, which makes it all the worse that they didn't quite nail it. Unfortunately, everyone just suddenly wants to be your friend, they want to hang out, they vie for your attention, all of which only highlights how incredibly fake and hollow that they actually are. It's also strange how they talk and interact with the camera, which is you. But what's possibly the most hilarious and absurd thing is how they try and make the camera feel like a person. You get handed a drink and at one point, someone actually lifts it up to the camera like you're taking a sip. It was laughable and that was honestly all that we could say about it. But let's move on to the actual racing. We're happy to report that Need for Speed is a very competent, if not outstanding, racer. By default, nonsense such as the brake and drift assist are turned on, which you can and should flick off for a better, deeper experience. We really can't complain about how the cars handle and feel because it's an absolutely acceptable racing experience with neither any major pros or cons. If we were going to complain about anything, it'd be the lack of control that you can feel at high speeds, especially when equipped with drifting tires. This isn't much of a concern with grip-oriented tires, but still, high speeds can feel a little bit unusual. The race types are quite typical and unfortunately don't offer much variety. You'll see drift races, sprints, time trials, and circuits, but they rarely feel unique at all, with only the drift race feeling any kind of distinct. But even then, you could easily win a drift race simply by drifting around the corners like you should in a racing game anyways. Car customization is extensive with the usual selection of decals, colors, tires, hoods, body kits, and more. Performance can be tweaked with a variety of car parts, though for the most part, it's a situation where the higher level you are, the better parts you can unlock, with no benefits to choosing a less powerful piece of equipment. The higher level gear is better, so by the end of the game, the insides of your car will likely be identical to any other player. Now, as far as the PC performance goes, we can't complain about it at all. Ghost Games did take lots of time to ensure that this version would get the care that it needed. We put all settings to the max on 1080p and enjoyed an incredibly solid 60 frames per second experience, but with a 980 Ti, we could have certainly run the game at even faster frame rates if we had had the display to do so. The Frostbite is in great shape here too. The roads are slick and wet everywhere, which was obviously done so lights and reflections could shine off of them, giving the game a very beautiful look. Lights was passed at high speed and other cars do the same. The cars themselves look amazingly detailed in motion, and with such a great Great variety you really can't complain. Though we do want to mention a note for NVIDIA users, the recent controversial NVIDIA drivers were working fine until we used Need for Speed, which caused issues in the game and then in other games as well. Because of this, we did have to roll back to the most recent stable drivers, which we thought was something worth keeping in mind for the time being. By far, the most annoying part of the experience for us had to be the fact that other online racers show up in your world. It's somewhat frustrating when you're racing and an AI racer that's not involved in your race comes barreling down the road towards you head on, but when real people show up, things can really go downhill fast. A real player can happily decide to shunt you during your entire drift race should they choose to, meaning that you're likely better to play this game offline. With completely acceptable racing, cringe-inducing cutscenes, and a questionable online mode, Need for Speed for PC is a worthwhile racer if not the best one available. You won't regret your purchase, but you're not likely to recommend it to all of your friends either. Maybe wait for a sale, but rest assured that this is a well-optimized port of a decent, if not amazing racer, so we gave it a 7.4.